I'm Marissa Norcross. And I'm Dave Freud, so that must make this the next page. Hey, Marissa, how are you? Hey, I'm good. How are you? I am. You know what? I was going to say terrific, but that might be a bit of a lie because I'm mm-hmm. just exhausted today. Yeah. So, but I'm, I'm going to bring some energy because, mm-hmm. you know, I do a lot of teaching on how you manage your energy for the day. So I had a major draw this morning. I had a major energy draw later this afternoon. And so this is probably my last energy draw for the day. So I'm going to mm-hmm. go, you know, recover after this. Yep. How about you? Uh, you know, it's been a day. <laughs> uh, busy, busy day, but I do like it. I do Good. like that. Um, you know, we're, we're back to school now. I think I mentioned my daughter's yes. in preschool and yeah. I am loving it. I love being back in that community of a school. And, Good. um, so while I am tired and a little exhausted from finding this new routine, it is in its own way life-giving it's both exhausting and life-giving but good yeah so what makes it life-giving well my daughter is absolutely thriving at school and so seeing her like that is life-giving um the baby (laughs) the baby knows what's up too (laughs) she knows that she has me to herself on Tuesdays Good. and Thursdays. So that's fantastic. And like I said, just the being part of a, such a positive community yep. is um is something that I really enjoy. Good. So mm-hmm. I, I love the way, you know, the things you articulated there because so Isla is thriving in school. Mm-hmm. She's doing well. Mm-hmm. She's learning. She's experiencing things. Mm-hmm. Lena understands she has time with mom. Mm-hmm. So that's that's a relationship piece. Mm-hmm. And you're around positive people. And, and all mm-hmm. of those things work into, you know, you're looking at it from the standpoint of a young mom. Yeah. But, you know, you're a leader at home mm-hmm. in that regard. So all of us as leaders, you know, when we see our team really growing, really beginning to develop and to, to, to blossom, so to speak, in their gifted areas, that's energizing. Mm-hmm. When, we, when we take the time to be around people that are positive and in a, with a growth mindset, that's energizing. And our other team members may really appreciate the time that they have one-on-one with us. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing. You're doing it in the home setting, and and some of us may be doing it in a corporate setting right now, Mm -hmm. but it's all the same thing. And it kind of fits right into our our podcast for this week, and it's probably going to be a little bit shorter because it's really a recap. Yeah. And then we do have a surprise for our for our listeners at the end. So let's Mm -hmm. jump right in. And I think the the title that we used for today is, you know, let's pull it all together Mm -hmm. because we've spent four weeks. (coughs) <coughs> excuse me it wouldn't be a podcast if one of us would talk <laughs> so anyways so if we hear some you know crinkling it's my water bottle <laughs> but um so we're just going to recap it was been four weeks i think it's been exciting it's been exciting for me to talk about it mm-hmm. but let's we had four sessions that were specifically designed to help us build a growth plan and the first one step one was where do you want to go mm-hmm you know, and it's hard to believe that that was a month ago, but it, it really, it really was a month ago. Mm-hmm. And I think that I had said that that was the toughest step um, because we really have to take the time to figure out what is of value to us. What is it, you know, where do we want to go? We need to slow down and identify exactly where we want to put our efforts. And I think if I remember, go way back there. You know, there's nothing more discouraging than taking time to build a ladder and climbing the ladder only to find it's leaning up against the wrong wall. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be intentional about your growth. So please go back and make sure that you are thinking through where it is we want to go. Um, Involve those people that are important to you in your life. Mm -hmm. You know, make sure that this growth plan and the growth plan is really isn't just focused on work. It's it's multifaceted. Um, you know, we talk about developing, uh, identifying values that, that, that speak to our heart. And so we really want to encourage people, go back, take the time to do the work on that. And then step two was, where am I now? So, if, you know, for me to, to plot a course, and I like to use navigation terms, if I'm going to plot a course to a certain spot, I need to know where I start from. What's my origination point? And the only way to do that is to take a real honest look at who we are. And one of the tools we used there was our closest friend assessment, which 
can be painful, mm-hmm. but not difficult. Because oftentimes we're not who we think we are. And there may be some homework that we need to do. And, and we, so we need to find out, again, it was, the, it was the greatest strengths and our greatest weaknesses. And then once again, selecting our six values that have meaning to our life. So these are the things that are really, really important to us and important to our plan. And then step three was kind of a fun one. Um, it was where do we go for the information? Mm-hmm. You know, um, and, then, and there were a myriad of sources that we, we looked at. And we, we, if our listeners can go back, there were free ones. We talked about free ones that you could, you know, things like books that you can get from the library, audio books you can get from the library, um, TED Talks. Um, all of the all of the the online materials we we mentioned even that there are free online courses mm-hmm. that you can take and so once you know where you want to go and you identify where the gaps are now we start building those things in uh, we really want to stress the mentorship and the networking because I think those are huge for us find Somebody one time said, a very wise person, John Maxwell, if you're the smartest person in the class, you're in the wrong class. Because there's nobody you can learn from. So find some folks that are farther down the journey. Whether they're... So let me ask you a question. Where do Mm -hmm. you find people that you could use as mentors as a young mom, a young wife, and also a professional? So it's almost as if you were reading my mind because I was going to interject and say that I, you know, in our previous podcast episode, we did, I think, talk a little bit more of about the professional resources um, for your professional life. But the more I thought about this, I thought of some additional resources for my personal right. life and, you know, especially in the areas of mentors and networking. So, um, in my mind, I replaced those with like groups of people, whether it be, I think I've mentioned before that I'm in a really active book club um, mm-hmm. that we're, we're going into our, we're about to start, we just started our fourth year. So we've been around for a while. Um, that is a kind of like the equivalent of networking for me. That's like my mom's group that gathers yeah. every month. Um, we call it book club, but. And we do talk about books. We talk about one book every month, but we also do a lot of just kind of exchanging like, hey, how do you do meal planning or how do you how do you handle um, we've had we've talked about like difficult things that happen on the bus. Like, how do you talk to your kids about things that they come home saying happened on the bus? Um, And then as far as mentors go, I listen to a lot of podcasts. So that does fall into the podcast category. But I think good that in some ways spills over into the mentor category for me because I, Mm -hmm. sometimes I just listen to, you know, random podcast episodes, but then other times there are some podcasts that I will follow and those almost become like that mentoring relationship, even though it's someone I I don't even personally know. um, If I find a show that has similar values to me or, um, or just any kind of similarity, then it makes it more of a mentor relationship. But I really do find like those, those groups to be really helpful, whether it be um, a mom's group or there's something called mops, which is like an official thing. Moms of preschoolers, I want to say there's a lot of pockets of people that you just need to find your group. And that can be really supportive in my in my experience as a mom. <laughs> and where would, where would you find those people? Like, how do you know where to look? Um, well, some of them, like I said, are like national organizations that have local chapters. So MOPS is like a, a, a national thing. Um, my, book, okay. my book club, we actually, some, someone, the president of our book club, um, she posted something in a in a mom's Facebook group for like mm-hmm. mo- moms on the East side. Um, yep. and just said, Hey, I, I used to live in Baltimore and we had a, a book club. I was in a book club there and I really miss it. Would anyone be interested? And fate brought a dozen of us together and uh, it ended up that a few of us actually did know each other a little bit. Um, but it all kind of started there. Um, good. 
but then I also meet a lot of people at the library or mm-hmm. kind of in those places where you go with your kids and are almost forced yep. forced into conversation with other people uh, sure. and forming friendships with people that way. So does the library still have things like story hours for kids? And Oh, do they ever? Uh, you know, I'm, I love the library and it is a library card month. It's like where they have a big push for getting your library card. So I'll just say okay. if you don't have one, now's a really good time to get one. It's free. Yeah. Your ta- well, your tax dollars support right. your local library. So take advantage. But um, yes, libraries have story time for all different ages, like babies and That's books, great. preschool story hour. They do um, evening. Some libraries will have like once or twice a week an evening, like a 6 p.m., 630. Great. So that if parents work, they can still go. They'll a lot of times do a craft after they do the story or a song wow. or there's all kinds of things. That's and awesome. You can meet all kinds of people. And and yeah, and you, you kind of brought it right back around where, you know, that's how we can find the people to build some of our mentoring networks. Mm-hmm. And I like, too, how you talked about, you know, mentors that you never meet. Mm-hmm. Anybody that's teaching you something can be a mentor. So they can mentor you through through TED Talks, podcasts. Mm-hmm. Um, webinars, books, you just, you identify what it is you want to learn and then you find the person that can teach you that. Mm -hmm. Uh, A great example that I know I've used on, on my podcast in the past was, you know, some years ago when I first started writing my weekly blog posts and Tim said to me, you know, dad, you need to read something other than just leadership books. And I said, like what? And he goes, well, if you want to become a better writer, read good writing. Mm Mm-hmm. And that's when I started reading things like uh, things that Peggy Noonan had written, one of Ronald Reagan's speechwriters. Mm-hmm. You know, I really like her style. So she's mentoring me in writing, and I, I'll, I may never meet the woman. Mm-hmm. So just, just I'm encouraging folks to look at those things so that, you know, those, those resources are, are out there. You just, you have to do the work. And, and that's one thing that we're going to say is, a growth plan only works if you're willing to put the work in. You have to be dedicated to, to developing yourself because mm-hmm. nobody else is going to do it for you. So then the last piece was um, building the plan. And, and last week I gave some examples of, of my plan. So I picked one area of my, of my values. So we have our six values. And then I used personal growth because my personal growth feeds my professional growth, my career growth. And so I identified some things that I was doing in that. And, and one, of the, one of the keys, I think, to building a good plan is that you want to have daily, weekly, monthly, and annual activities. Because mm-hmm. it's, you know, it, and, and so my daily ones aren't necessarily as, so the annual one might be, I go to two events a year. One of them is a three to four day event. The other one is our Live to Lead uh, which is coming up on the last Friday of October. So there's a shameless self-promotion again for, for one of Mackney's events. <clears throat> that is me. that is selling. We are getting like really close to selling out. So Yeah, we are. If, yeah, if people want to go, register quick because mm-hmm. I have a feeling we're selling out. It's, mm-hmm. it's, this has been the, the, the fastest selling of tickets to Live to Lead that I can remember yeah. since we started it. Um, so, but events, yeah, the events are great. They're not that frequent. It's kind of like right. vacations. If you don't find a way to build, you know, mini vacations into your life, you only go on a vacation once a year typically. Mm-hmm. So it's the daily things. And that's where things like our social media can be a real big push for us. Reminders, you know, little people that we may follow on social media, but also the activities like audiobooks or reading where you can block out some time um, or podcasts actually could be a daily thing. So again, we want to focus on daily, weekly, monthly, and annual or semi-annual parts, aspects to our growth plan. Um, Macney's huge on on networking. Uh, Macney is huge with classes. We offer more classes than we've ever offered. Um, and I really also want to encourage people, you know, those online types of things that are of with no cost to you, find them. Mm-hmm. And, and two, I think maybe I should put this offer out marissa that if somebody's stuck they should email us Mm -hmm. just you know email marissa norcross or me yeah 
It's Our emails. M, M M Nor- yeah, M Norcross. Thank you. M Norcross or defrying at macme.org. Mm-hmm. Go to our website. You'll find our name. Click it and email us. Tell us, hey, what, you know, I'm stuck here. Help me figure this out. We'd be more than happy to, to give you some advice. Mm-hmm. I love doing that kind of stuff too. <laughs> and you're good at it. <laughs> so, so now we've created a special treat for our listeners. Why don't you talk mm-hmm. about it? So I was really excited to take this opportunity to create a PDF download for our listeners um, because partially because I needed it for myself. Um, I know, David, you're a little more experienced with building this growth plan, but um, my mind, I needed it kind of written out for me. I like to, yep. you know, print things out and have them bound at staples so I can have my little workbook. Um, so I thought, you know, if I'm going to do this for myself, I might as well share this with our listeners. So we um, took the information that we talked about over the last four weeks between your posts and our podcast and created a PDF guide that will help you just jumpstart your growth plan. Um, We included the example that you provided uh, from your personal growth plan right in there. And um, just kind of have it broken down step by step. And at the end, there's just a kind of a template that can help you with each of your values, work through that part of your growth plan. So we're... You did a great job. Thank you. It was really fun for me. And like I said, I, I kind of did it because I really wanted it, but then I thought hopefully some other people would find it useful as well. And we we will have that, um, in the notes. So if you're, if you're in, I use the Apple apps, I'm not sure what it's like, where you exactly find it in the others. But, um, when you're looking at the description, there's notes right in there and we'll have a hyperlink that'll take you directly to a PDF that you can download and save or print, whatever you want to do with it. And I just ask that you give us some feedback and let us know if you like that or if, yeah. if, um, if you thought it was too much, too little information, that would be really helpful as we consider doing that again in the future. Yeah. And also, you know, let us know if you like the series concept mm-hmm. because we're, you know, we're, we want to make this, our goal for this podcast is to add value to people and bring something that's meaningful to you. And, and we need to, we need to know if we're doing it. We need to know mm-hmm. if we're on the right track and what mm-hmm. you want. Now, for those that, that, that want something, a deeper, a richer experience than just the podcast and the, and the PDF, I will be uh, launching in November, and, and we'll, we'll make sure that that information is on some podcasts once the dates are set. It'll also be, um, there will be notes about it in my weekly posts. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to be offering a, a growth planning workshop. And what this is going to be, it's going to be two two two-hour sessions. The first two-hour session will be kind of leading us down the path of discovery. You know, what is it that you want to do? Uh, You know, I will have in in the the materials for that, there will be a series of value words that you can choose from. And and the, the nice part about working in a group like that is we can have a conversation about what it means. How do, we, how do we find these things? Uh, there will be the tools available for you to do the closest friend assessments um, and identify you know, strengths, weaknesses kind of things, what, what it means, what do we do with it. So the first week, the first two hours is really how do I get into this? How do I develop? What do I really, really want type of thing? Mm-hmm. Um, and then you've got some homework. So you go back and you, you do the assessments. You do the reflection on where you are in each of those categories. And then the following week when we come back, all right, now how do we find the resources? Where do we find them? And how do we structure the system so that it works for us on a daily, weekly, monthly, annual basis? How do we record the information, the successes, the failures, the learnings? So there will be literally the documents that you can use to enter your progress so that literally you'll have a roadmap for a year and you'll have check-ins. Some will be daily, some will be weekly, monthly, and then annual to see where we're going. So that's really what the plan is. It would be a total of four hours of your time, but two hours one week and two hours the next week because you need the time in between to do some homework. So Mm -hmm. I'm excited. That's It's brand new for us. 
We're going to be launching it in November, uh, but you'll see we'll give you at least a four to six week um, advance notice of when it's coming. And all the information on the class would be available on MACME's website. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited about that. Yeah, so am I. I hope I can be uh, there. Because, you know, I've, I've seen enough success when you do it well in myself and in other people to say, you know what? You deserve to do this for yourself. Mm -hmm. you, need, you deserve to do this for your family because it will have dramatic impact on your life when you, when you really put together a true growth plan. So that's right around the corner. Yes, it is. November is not that far it, away. It, you're right. And I do love the fact that we have the PDFs that people, if you, if you don't want to go through that, the, that whole process, if you want to do like Growth Plan Light, that's really what the PDFs are. They're totally free. Mm -hmm. um, but if it, and it might just get you started and you might say, hey, you know what, this is really good, but I think I need, you know, the, the group coaching kind of thing to get it to work real well. And mm -hmm. clearly that's going to be available for us. Exciting. It is. So what do you like best about fall? Um, well, this year we are having quite the fall because I think I, maybe I mentioned this too, maybe not, that we have a bucket list with quite a few items on it oh. to ensure that we have an intentional season and that we have fun together as a family. So right now I think that's kind of my favorite thing about fall is that we have this plan of how we are going to spend our free time. That's awesome. Yeah. How about you? I, you know, I love fall because fall sets, I, I love the fact that like the harvest time mm -hmm. gathering things in, I love the fact that, you know, I, I do a lot of heating with wood. So getting my mm -hmm. firewood in place, getting it stacked and in under roof, so to speak. And, you know, and then I love the, you're preparing for the winter kind of thing. And then, you know, Thanksgiving comes, which is, I'm, I'm huge about gratitude. Mm -hmm. And then it ushers me into my most wonderful time of the year, folks. Hello, <laughs> it's coming. It's right around the corner. Um, I am going to try to do more skiing this winter too. So it kind of gets me ready. I, mm -hmm. you know, I love every season that I'm in and I love every season that I'm moving into. Mm -hmm. And when you can find things that you love about the season you're in mm -hmm. and the season that's coming, you're just happy. Yep. Yes. So that's the goal. And that's why, because you know how I feel about fall in the sense that I have a love-hate relationship. You do. Because I don't love what comes after fall. <laughs> <laughs> and just before spring? Yes. That is sandwiched in between. So right. I'm hoping we're doing really well with our bucket list so far. And Isla Good. is having a getting a kick out of it and we're having fun. So my hopes is that we will continue that and do, we're already talking about our winter bucket list to make sure that awesome. we don't just sit inside uh, and maybe sad for <laughs> the entire winter. You know, <laughs> I'm sensing a podcast here. Oh, yes. How do I, how do I build my seasonal bucket list? Yes, that that is that could be a good one because I know that I talked about that the summer that I had Lena, which was at, yep. towards the end of summer. So I talked about that spring and early summer how I was having an intentional summer, and yes. um, now we're we're really trying to make it an, a seasonal thing. So is that something that could get pulled together by next week? Uh, yeah, probably. There we go. Ha. <laughs> Good. Look, so look <laughs> I was just going to tell you, I didn't know what we were talking about next week. And we do. We're going to talk about developing your seasonal bucket list. Love it. Is this like a guest post article from yes. me? Yes. Wow. You're going to do it. And then I get to interview you next week. I'm so okay. excited. Okay. I'll have to make sure I pull down my, we have our bucket list on the, on the wall. So I'll have to pull it down. That's awesome. Reference, just, you know, but... I'm going to, I'm not going to say anything. It's going to be perfect. I can't wait. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, so with that, I'm Dave Freund. I'm Marissa Norcross. And this was The Next Page.